Well, I want to just take the opportunity. Let's get into the Bible. It's going to be a brief, what we call a mini message. How many know that could be a mini haha if I don't make it a mini message? But we want to get into worship. And if you have your bulletin card, you're going to see that it is all about worship. First of all, our series has been when messiness can become manageable, messiness to manageable. And we've been looking at this series in a number of different categories, but today we're going to deal with worship and worship, how it looks with regards to scripture. And then we're going to get right back into worship. I don't know if you have an opportunity and you've had teaching on worship or praise, and then you really don't get an opportunity to experience that or express that. Well, we want to do just that. So worship's going to look a little bit involved, maybe even a little messy, but it isn't, is it? Because we know what we're doing. So today it is, the title of the message is Worship Can Be Messy. That's what today's message is all about. And as you know, today is, in our live stream audience, it's September the 25th. How many know what is happening in three months from today? 25th, does that ring a bell? And even before then, Coast FM will come on with Christmas songs all month long. Some of you are so excited about that, it becomes your sweet swing all month long. Something about singing or songs that take you back to better days or highlight things that really are enjoyable. And nobody's going to be able to really celebrate the holidays, holy days, that's what holidays mean except Christians. So I'm so glad one of the things about becoming a follower of Jesus is that Thanksgiving, I mean, Easter, it's so much more meaningful and impacting. And any time I come into church now, I was a time as a young lad, I would go to church and I was not born again. And so church was just something you did on Sunday. I'm hoping that's not the case for any of us, when we become radically born again, like Jesus said in John 3, 3, man, a person's got to be born again of the Spirit, or else they're not even going to enter the kingdom. And that means not just going to heaven, that means really going in and enjoying and exploring the things that God has supernaturally for us. You've got to be born again, because our spirit is just disconnected with God. So let's take a look at the word, some brief outline, and I'm excited because so many of you showed up for the first week of Life Group. So make notes, you're going to hear me rattle off a few verses, make sure you put them down, just say what you can compare with your Life Group team, and if you don't have a Life Group, man, why don't you mix and match and go to at least two to maybe three this week and see how you like it. It'll be great. Father, open up your word We open our hearts to you today in Jesus' name, amen. How many know that we really live in a society that's filled with narcissism, that everything is all about us? I know when I give a message that is very poignant at a personal uh, value or personal struggle, I get a lot of emails saying, thank you, Pastor. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. But when I'm not addressing something of our own human struggle or our own human worth, and we start talking about God, it takes a dimension of God's grace to let us see him and let us understand him, or else it's like, eh, I'm not there. Oh, I, I don't quite get it. But worship is something that is so valuable in the kingdom of God and exciting for us to get us freed up from the focus of self. Just take a look. What is a selfie called, right? (laughs) Selfies. And we are all about ourselves. But worship really helps us. We're going to begin right now with a couple of verses. Just lay it out, and then we're going to just plot along and get back into worship. So enjoy your little sits right now, and then we're going to engage God. But let's look here. At Psalm, I'm looking at 89, verse 15. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence, Lord. I tell you, that's something, if you've ever been blue, disgusted with the situation, and you say, I will just start thanking the Lord, there's something that opens up in the light of God's presence 
that really helps and it delivers us from real darkness. Check out also Psalm chapter 100, verse 2, where it says, Worship the Lord with gladness, come before him singing with joy. Now, how many know New Testament text says rejoice always, and again I say rejoice, it all focuses on God. To know him, to experience him, really helps us. That's what we do best as Christians. That's been a mark of a Christian. Matter of fact, Lord Acton actually said that it comes along that the Holy Spirit is a glad spirit and that a Christian that's not happy is like, that's somebody that may not be engaged with the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at John chapter 4, verse 23. And it says this in verse 23 and 24. It says, but the time is coming and indeed is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Man, let's just think about that for a moment. God's here now. God's a spirit. How do you know he's here? Well, you start to see the effects of God the Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You start to see the effects like the wind. Remember, Jesus told that to Nick at night in John 3 again. Hey, no, you don't know which way the wind is blowing, but you know the effects of it. Same with here in downtown Huntington Beach. You can't see the wind, but you sure see the palm fronds moving and the effects of windy day. Same with God's presence start to see a move in our hearts and around us. Things start to shift, and God is a spirit, and he's wanting us, let's just put it this way, to just come before him in sincerity, in truth. You don't have to put up a facade. It's just a beautiful thing. God knows it's just really between you and the Lord, but it sure does help to gather with others. That is very inspiring. When I see others worshiping the Lord, it's like, what's with me? Come on, Paul, get with it. But let's take a look here because we're wanting to just see a brief outline about worship. Number one, on your notes, worship is fundamental. The only activity that you do now on earth that you'll also do in heaven. We know in the early church in Acts chapter 2 in verse 47, it says that the Christians went around from house to house breaking bread. They were fellowshipping, praising God and having favor with all peoples. Now, that's important for us to see that. So the church started off just praising God. Then Revelation's also important in chapter 4. So just write down Revelation 4. God's so kind to give us a glimpse of what it is around the throne in heaven. But man, worship is going off in that setting. It's very important. Just verses 1 through 11 of Revelation 4. How about number 2? Worship is intellectual. Remember, our minds don't check out when we worship. We're not trying to work anybody up to some frenzy. Like some, somehow it's out of control, just mind-altering, acting a little messy. No, our minds fully engage. It's important for us. And God's character is not only eternal, but remember, he sustains everything and something starts to open up when we realize that God is involved with everything. I call them praise prompters. That's actually what a person, his name is Randy Alcorn, said. You look and spend any time outdoors, and you're going to get a praise prompter every now and then. You say, wow, that's pretty cool. That is a great sunset. Somebody keeps asking me, well, I don't believe in God. I haven't seen him. I said, wow, why don't you go out? At night, stand on the shoreline, maybe the desert, hit a mountaintop, and see the stars. Why? Because God is writing in the sky, I exist. I exist. And God lets us know those are praise prompters. We should just say, and if you've ever heard me, just say, man, praise the Lord. It's important for us to even express that. Give him credit is really what that's saying. So it's intellectual when we get a chance to do that. God's actions should prompt us to have a reaction. I like that. He's doing stuff. He's doing stuff even today. He'll do a lot for you today. He'll do a lot for you today. It's a merciful hand of God when we see him doing it. 
And be careful about any form of setbacks and negative. Number three, worship is physical. We use a physical expression because of who we are talking to. When we say physical, that means how do you know when somebody's actually worshiping God? Well, you can see because there's expressions with their body or with their voice. To say, I'm just going to, I just going to meditate. Well, that's meditating. But real worship involves our physical frame. Scripture says that. I like Psalm 95, verse 6. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Psalm 95, verse 6. Very direct. You would really know that that person's worshiping the Lord when they are bowing down and kneeling. Wow, it's pretty good. So you can see here physical aspects. There's plenty of that within Scripture. We've got the raising of the hands, 1 Timothy 4, 8. You have the loud expressions, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. You have areas where people are standing. You have people that are dancing. Can you imagine? What do you think? Could we do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Psalm 149, verse 3, they danced before the Lord. Now, there's nothing to think of dancing when you go to a wedding reception. You hope that they bust out the dance floor. huh? But to say, all of a sudden, we're going to do that in church, oh, that could be a little messy. Come on. Before the Lord. Could be pretty exciting. Some of you are pretty good dancers. Others, yeah, go ahead and dance. (laughs) So let's enjoy that. Number four. Worship is musical. Biblical expression of music has always been a part of God's people. So always, always in church history, Revelations 5, 8 talks about harps, <laughs> typical thing, but those bowls of incense that are the prayers of the saints. goes on with Scripture, Psalm 150, 4 through 5, timbrel and dance again, talking about stringed instruments, flute, harp, why? It's amazing. Matter of fact, if you hold on, how many know there is that element where it talks about even symbols or tambourines? Remember my wonderful holy mackerel? Many of you have never seen this before, but it's our form of Christian cussing. Holy mackerel. So some of you are helping holy mackerel to become more holy, and there we go. Look at that. Isn't that great? We've got holy mackerels become a tambourine. Ah, huh, huh? Who knows how to work this one? You don't get it from me, that's for sure. But it's pretty interesting to have a tambourine in a form of worship. So whatever we could do to express that is pretty enjoyable to get all the instrumentations going, especially music. Number five, worship is vocal. God's people sing. We have always sung. It's part of who we are. And the benefits to singing, you and I know that, isn't it? Physically, man, it feels like our health and our framework, our lungs open up. It feels like we're able to actually engage when you sing physically. How about even spiritually? When you are singing to the Lord spiritually, there's something that's obedient to that. And you will hear, you will hear the voice of God. You'll sense God say, I'm pleased with you too. The other thing about singing unto the Lord is an area where you're giving testimony. You're giving a witness. That's pretty powerful. And when we take a look at that, it's wonderful because we get a chance all of a sudden to declare truth to other people. You are implanting truth in us about God's faithfulness and how he's going to come around. You're declaring truth to other people that are around you. It's wonderful to sing. It's wonderful to sing truth. It's wonderful to sing about things that are true. And certainly Jesus is all about that. And finally, number six, worship is emotional. When revival comes to the human heart, renewal comes to the human voice. And that's a wonderful expression. Remember what's Jesus who said so clearly that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You can always tell what a person's wrestling with or happy about. They'll talk about it. Jesus said that. You go ahead. What are they thinking about? They'll tell you often about themselves, maybe about issues, concerns, but something about when God starts to renew us individually, 
we can't help but expressing that, especially in our form of worship. So worship is emotional. And I like Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 through 14. It says so clearly that they worship God with a loud voice. Everybody say loud voice. Loud voice. Loud voice. Loud voice. Loud voice. Try it again. Loud voice. loud voice. Some of you aren't getting loud. Loud voice. Loud voice. Yeah, they worshiped God with a loud voice. Day of Pentecost, that wasn't a little murmur, man. It was like trains coming through town where everybody in Jerusalem said something is going on. Now, wouldn't it be great as we worship Jesus this morning that all of a sudden little flames start to hit the top of the roof. People start to say something is going on in that building and I've got to check it out. But even better... What if your temple, temple of the Holy Spirit, starts to have manifestations of God coming down and visiting you because you're worshiping him? God is still alive. He's still working. He's still moving. Remember, God is seeking such who will worship him in truth. God's seeking. He's here. I know the only reason he would do that, he's confident in himself that when he starts to come, A little more involved in your life. Good things are going to happen. Good things are going to happen. Remember, the disciples were tripping out when they're out there in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is walking on the water. They just didn't expect him to come that direction in that form. And the Bible says they thought it was a spirit, an evil spirit, a ghost. How many know if God comes in a way that you're not expecting, but it's God, good things are going to happen. Isn't it true? So don't box him in, but certainly let him in as we worship the Lord right now. Well, I want to invite you to stand to your feet. One of the things that they've asked me to just invite us to be a part of, you know we've been incorporating our tithes and offerings in our worship. So as the ushers come forward now, we're just going to begin our worship set and say, Lord, here it is. Here's my portion of what you've given to me, I trust you. That's what our monetary system says, right? In God we trust. So it's not going to be in that coin, but a God who's going to seize our heart and help us in every way. It's our privilege to say, Lord. And let me just add, Father, if we don't have anything to give because nothing has happened or we don't have a job or we're concerned because bills have been just taking over, do something in our heart today. That would change it, where we say, I want to give unto the Lord and give it as a worship to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to worship. Thank you, ushers. I want to thank you for joining us today at Hope Chapel, Huntington Beach. It's our desire to bring the teachings of this church to others globally. If today's message has brought you closer to Jesus, we want to know. Can you send us an email to office at hopechapelhb.org? Would you consider supporting this ministry financially? You can give securely online at hopechapelhb.org slash give. If a check is your preferred method, you can send a mailed check to Hope Chapel, P.O. Box 548 Huntington Beach, California, 92648. If you want to be contacted by Hope Chapel, would you consider subscribing to our weekly newsletters at hopechapelhb.org slash subscribe. Whatever season of life you're in, we want to go through it with you. We want to thank you once again for joining us, and God bless you.